Welcome to Adapting Place. Uh, as we continue the series on uh, Moscow skeletal, this is something people always have a problem with in terms of diagnostic procedures. So I'm just going to give you key facts related to each diagnostic procedure so that you can be familiar. When you see a question, you know why it's being done for that patient. So everybody knows what S-ray is, right? S-ray basically is used to evaluate in bone integrity, if there's any fracture, if there's any dislocation, you know, if there's anything wrong with the bone, that's all. The S-ray will provide clear image of the bone, but it cannot see the soft tissue. What does that mean? This is the bone and this is the muscle around it. You can see the muscle is designed to go through bone. That's all. So it give you a picture of the bone but not soft tissue. That's why it's good for fracture, dislocation, and any abdominality. What do you tell the patient? Well, they should not have any object like bottom or pain, anything that will interfere with the X-ray, anything that metallic may basically um, be able, will take the uh, X-ray and it may reflect it. That may interfere with the image. You may also have to know it's a radiation. So if they're pregnant, it's not good. Right? What did, education do you provide to the patient? This is a very quick, like less than five seconds, you're done. And if there's no pain, the most important is to um, remain still. And sometimes they want you to hold your breath. But that's all. That is all you need to know about x ray. CT scan. Yeah. Computer tomography scan. So this one it's the same as the S3, but it's different. It's more adma advanced using the computer and taking a picture of the whole body. It gives you detailed information. It can give you information about the bone, about the soft tissue surrounding the bone. It can give you detail if there's a fracture, tumor, or anything like that. So it's more advanced than the S3, right? Um, the most important nursing intervention is the style you need to know, concentration. We're going to give you contrast. So if you have contrast allergy, most of the time, uh, iodine allergy, you have to be aware. So we can do certain things to prevent you from uh, getting reaction from the contrast, right? Shellfish allergy is not a contraindication. So if somebody with shellfish allergy can get a CT scan with contrast, right? But if you have iodine allergy, depending on how bad it is, we can give you steroid, we can give you and diphenylhydramine, and we can hydrate you all this pre the procedure so that you will not have a reaction. It can affect your kidney, cause a uh, uh, contrast nephropathy. So if people with the uh, renal function that is not good already, you have to be aware of. This is what your board like. They love this question related to metformin. So. So whenever a patient is on metformin, especially diabetes, who's going to get a CT scan, you need to hold it for 48 hours and wait 48 hours before starting it. Otherwise, they will develop a lactic acidosis. So what kind of education do you provide the patient? When they inject the contrast, they're going to have warm sensation. This is normal. Okay, they need to remain still and they may have to follow breathing procedures, but just let them know they will be flushing their face they feel very warm when the contrast is going through. But this is an expected finding. It's not an allergic reaction. From the computed, we look for magnetic resonance imaging. This is different, different radiation that is being exposed uh, to you to take pictures. You produce detailed image, even better soft tissue, right? It provides better soft tissue, including uh, um, muscle, ligament, you can see a better idea. There's less radiation compared to CT scan because uh, this is different. It's a different kind of uh, imaging we're obtaining. So pregnant uh, women can get MRI because of uh, what is be how they're being exposed, right? The most important thing is um, Metallic object is a magnet, so it's abstract. It's, a, it, it's taking pictures using it's a giant magnet. We put into it and taking pictures. Unlike a computer CT scan, is a radiation we slamming your body with, and this will give you specific imaging. So because of that, any metallic implant, pacemaker, metallic clips, 
you cannot use it unless it said mri compatible that means it's compatible to mri that means you can use it for mri now in these days things that are mri compatible like x fix um ear implant pacemakers that you can use it so the, you have to look for the question saying that it's compatible. But if they don't tell you, it means it's not compatible. So you got to remove all metallic accessories from the patient before the procedure. It can take almost an hour. So you got to tell the patient if they are claustrophobic, it's a problem. You can provide earplug to help them. It can be noisy as the uh, metal spin around and take a picture the, the magnet is spinning around to take a picture so you'll be still for in a small closet very small area and so people are claustrophobic is a problem they may have to give them some sedation to help with that or provide your blog so they don't have to listen to it bone scan this is definitely is looking for activity right you can you can use it for fracture infection or cancer or other things uh, related to the bone this is a scan, okay? This one, we have to inject a different kind of contrast. We call it a tracer. We inject it in you, and it takes a couple of time before we inject you, and we have to wait for like sometimes minimum three hours before we do the scan. Uh, and then areas that has high metabolic rates, like infection, cancer, may pick up uh, the scan. And so this is specifically if you have infection or other thing like that, you can use it. Um, the kidney need to get rid of the tracer. So after procedure, you got to hydrate them to get rid of it. Um, there is no too much radiation. It's very minimal, but the most important motion artifact. So you don't, we don't want you to move all the time. Otherwise, you get this motion issue associated with that. Draw energy X-ray as optometry. This is the deca scan. It's mostly for bone density used for osteoporosis. So if you see osteoporosis question, they will say deca scan. This is what you use. You can see how the mineralization of the bone, right, is very very specific. What is the nursing uh, teaching you provided? Because calcium is going to pick up this issue. Uh, avoid any calcium within 24 hours of the procedure. It's non-invasive, it's very quick, and there's not too much radiation associated with it. Atroscopy is the rest surgery, right? This is surgery looking into your soul, atro, that is joint scopy uh, pictures. I'm taking pictures of your joint using a, a minimally invasive, small cameras going into your joint. It can be any joint you can think of. Next intervention uh, teaching is like bleeding. So you got to evaluate for anticoagulation, then signs of infection, there may be swelling. They can resume activity right away. It's not like a knee, um, knee atroplasty. Plasty is different. Scopy is a, just an outpatient procedure. And you have to teach them rights, elevate the leg affected, use eyes and pain medication. What is EMG? Electromyography, right? We're taking pictures of uh, uh, and finding out the function of the muscle, activity of the muscle as, as it's being um, stimulated with the nerve, right? That is the key. Assessing electric, electrical activity of the muscles and the nerves. And this will can determine neurovascular, neuromuscular disorder, like myasthenia gravis, like uh, amyloidal sclerosis, right? Jamboree syndrome. You can do EMG and see how the muscle and the nerves interacting. Key, I've worked caffeine before the procedure. This may affect the procedure. And then you got to review the history because sometimes we got to relax you with, with muscle relaxant. So this, this can affect it. Um, Atrocentesis, sometimes we have to take fluid from your joint, like uh, if you have gout, to see if there's crystals, if there's an analyze it, inflammation. Um, of course, sterile technique. We got to make sure we clean the area. There's a signs of infection. You have to monitor bleeding. Uh, you have to teach the patient that they may have small pain, but um, this will go away. Look at it, myelogrammy, that means spine. We're taking the picture of your spine, either CT or X-ray, by injecting some contrast and looking at your kidney. A not your spine, spine specifically, the spinal cord. Same thing, so far as contrast is involved, it's a gram. Contrast is involved, you got to check for contrast allergy. 
you got to they may have some headache after the procedure so that's the thing so you can hydrate them to watch for that so in brief general nursing tips for msk diagnostic allergy and, and, and contraindication screening you got to screen for contrast allergy iodine allergy metallic implant and other things especially for uh, mri positioning is very important if they can lay still it's a problem especially mri it can they, they cannot be in a closed space is a problem and post-op so far as they give them contrast emphasize hydration 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 take care of yourself and uh, good luck in your exams. Bye.